Stars initially form from clouds of dust and gas. The force of gravity makes the dust and gas spiral in together to form a protostar. As the gas and dust falls together, it gets hot. A star forms when it is hot enough to fuse hydrogen nuclei into helium. The star then immediately enters a long stable period where the heat created by the nuclear fusion provides an outwards pressure to counteract the force of gravity pulling everything inwards. In this stable period, it's called a main sequence star and it lasts several billion years. Luckily for us, our sun is about halfway through its stable period. Eventually, however, like everything, the star must die. It takes one of two courses, the boring way or the cool way. Stars that are about the same size as our sun tend to take the boring way out. When the hydrogen begins to run out, they begin to fuse heavier elements all the way up to iron in its core. The star at this point swells into a red giant which is unstable and ejects its outer layer of dust and gas as a planetary nebula, leaving behind a hot, dense, solid core called a white dwarf. Told you it was boring. Stars much bigger than our sun, such as Betelgeuse, are big enough to take a much more interesting route. Once they run out of hydrogen, they start to swell up too, into a red supergiant. At this point they are making elements in their core up to iron, but it's when they explode in a supernova that the heavier elements are formed, that are found all over our planet. The exploding supernova throws out its outer layers of dust and gas into space, leaving a very dense core called a neutron star, or in some cases, a black hole. So if stars are responsible for nearly all the elements on the periodic table, I guess you could say this video was brought to you by stars. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see some more. You can also follow me on Twitter at DoodleSci if you want to.